Welcome back, Stormwater designers, to our EPA Swim modeling series. We're picking up where we left off. Where we created that project, we started looking at some of the results here. I even had to make some corrections to my project because I had a conduit improperly um, <laughs> routed to the wrong direction, but we fixed it. We got the project running. Now we're going to go through some of the analysis tools and even set up more detailed projects here. If you're interested, we have a hydrology terms cheat sheet where you can learn about the most commonly used hydrology terms. You can download that down below as well as a Western Washington hydrology model free course to help you learn that software. You can find that in the links down below. Anyways, let's get into it. So this is kind of where we left off to generate a time series plot of a simulation result. So this is what we're going to do next. Um, one, we're going to select report graph time series from the menu bar or simply click the graph button on the main toolbar. Well, I'm going to take the shortcut. So let's do this. A time series plot selection dialog will appear. It is used to select the objects and variables to be plotted. For example, this dialog can be used to graph the flows and conduits C1 and C2 as follows. All right, let's set that up. So select conduit C1 on the map. If I can find conduit C1. Here we go, conduit C1. And okay, or I can add it. It says conduit C1. Okay, um, click the add button in the dialog. A data series selection page will appear. Select flow as the variable to plot. Okay, we've got that. Click the accept button to return to the plot selection page at the dialog. Okay, accept. And then repeat the steps above for conduit C2. Okay, so I'm going to add um, conduit C2, flow, accept. All right, we've got two right here. Um, and then click OK to plot. Nice. So we have our plot here for the flow of link C1 and C2 for the elapsed time here. You can see that C2 actually had more flow, a bigger peak, and it looks like more total flow here um, based on the project situation. That can show us some, some pretty useful data there. It says after a plot is created, you can customize its appearance by selecting report, customize, or right clicking on the plot. Oh, look at that. Right click. And we can change some of the colors and things, axes and things like that. That's useful. I'm not going to go into that, but um, that could be very useful. Um, copy it to the clipboard and paste it to another application by selecting edit, copy to, or clicking copy on the main toolbar. Um, let's see. So. And see if I can copy here. What exactly? I need to click to do that, but it looks like you can copy it. Oh, select edit. Um, copy to. Nice. And then maybe we could open up Excel or something and paste it, which would be uh, pretty useful. Or we can print it. Okay, there we go. The dialog box popped up. You can, you can copy to clipboard or a file as a bitmap, metafile, or data attack. Nice. Okay, so we got a lot of options there. Or you can print it by selecting file, printer file, print preview. Okay, so we can also print this time series plot. So we got that plotted. Um, and then says swim can generate profile plots showing how water surface depth varies across a path of connected nodes and links. Let's create such a plot for the conduits connecting junction J1 to the outfall out one of our example drainage system. Okay, I'm going to close this graph here. Now we're going to select report, graph, profile. Okay, so we got profile there. Enter either J1 as the start node um, of the field profile plot dialog that appears or select on the map. Okay, I'm going to go J1, the end node, and do the same for node out one and the end node. Okay, let's go out one. Excellent. And then click the find path button. An ordered list of the links which form a connected path between the specified start and end nodes will be displayed in the links in profile box. You can edit the entries in the box if needed. Click the OK button to create uh, the plot showing the water surface profile as it exists at the simulation time currently selected in the map browser. OK, so let's go click OK. We've got a plot there. This, will sh this uh, shows the water surface profile. As you move through the using the map browser or with the animator controller, the water depth profile on the plot will be updated. Observe how node J2 becomes flooded between hours two and three of the storm events. So this should be a way to move the time. Okay, so this will show this shows the different times for that. Let me rerun this project here actually. 
And uh, let me try that again. This is our profile plot. Um, the appearance of the profile plot can be customized or can be copied or printed as the other graphs that we did. Okay, so there's that one. Let's move on here. Running a dynamic wave analysis. Okay, so in the analysis just ran, uh, just run, we chose to use the kinematic wave method of routing flows through our drainage system. This is an efficient but simplified approach that cannot deal with such phenomena as backwater effects, pressurized flows, flow reversal, and non uh, dendritic layouts. Swim also includes a dynamic wave routing procedure that can represent these conditions. So this is going to be more in depth here. This procedure, however, requires more computation time due to the need for smaller time steps to maintain numerical stability. Most of the effects mentioned above would not apply to our example. However, we had one conduit C2 that flowed full and caused its upstream junction to flood. It could be that this pipe is actually being pressurized and could therefore convey more flow than was computed using kinematic wave routing. We would now like to see what would happen if we apply dynamic wave routing. Okay, so what they're saying is um, pipe C2 flowed full uh, completely. And so they're trying to figure out, is that going to cause a, a negative backwater effect or did it become pressurized so that we're actually getting more flow? And so that's kind of the balance that we're trying to figure out here. So to run the analysis with, with dynamic wave routing, from the project browser, select the options category and click the uh, edit button here. Okay. Options. On the general page of the simulation options dialog that appears, select dynamic wave. So we have kinematic wave selected. Now we have dynamic wave. Make it a little small. Okay. Click OK to close the form and select project run simulation. Okay, so let's run it again. If you look at the status report for this run, you'll see that no longer any flooding. The peak flow carried by conduit C2 has been increased from 3.52 to 4.04. .04. Well, let's check that. So, um, report graph profile. Let's add um, conduit C2. So, I guess that was a link. Okay, C2, the flow, let's graph that. Yep, it does reach a higher peak flow here. You can see that right there. But that's graphing it using the dynamic wave analysis.